What's up everyone? Welcome back to Freak Out Extreme Free Ride. I'm in Sedic and I've got my boys with me. I've got Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? I've got Blackout the MNM. Hey. And I got Matt Rocks 101. Do 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 it's trucks. Bringing it back. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bring it it You know, back. I said A there, I was gonna I was gonna call myself the new Fonz, and I'm like, you know what, there's probably a rapper out there who is calling themselves that. Now yeah, uh actually. do do they rap only in Happy Days references or yes. Oh dude. You could get some sweet wish, samples but... out of like the, the music from that show. <laughs> Alright. So we are starting on the fourth and final mountain range, Cascade Hills. And the first uh mountain on it, Bunker Hill. <gasps> Oh, Damn. yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, kind of the explosive home stretch. You're racing from third base to home plate. And I gotta say, for Cascade Mountains, they they ramp up the length of these tracks. You know, you'll be riding down these mountains. I love the art style of this game, like the little heads that pop up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at the look at the heads and you can tell me which one which which one is, is your current mood, which one you're feeling. Yeah. Like, th those are just Twitch emojis waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not enough people use Cranker Z in our Discord server. Maybe I should pull some yeah. of these. Like that one there would be Fat Ski. Yeah, <laughs> Fat Ski. Yeah, F A T S K Fat Ski. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we got a nice little kind of maybe sunrise or sunset, but sort of that. Like, the sun is doing same... something. <laughs> yeah, the sun is no. doing something, which is usually a good sign. <laughs> Usually a good sign. Active sun, yeah. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Well, you, this this game came out in 2007, right? Correct. Now, uh, I think you talked about the graphics before, uh, like way early on, but I never got to weigh my opinion on them. So, since this is Ooh. since I'm here, I get to weigh my opinion on these graphics. Oh, challenge failed. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> no, you still go ahead. What, what is your opinion? It was a real challenge. It was to be expected. Yeah, I was gonna say those always looked really wonky to me as well. I know yeah. they look. They look pretty smooth. Really? I'm a girl with dreads. <laughs> um, but I, like, I, I, I feel like I can really kind of appreciate like the the. It looks like a little bland, but I've always really liked the the snow effects. Yeah. And I know those yeah, weren't well, anything new. What's supposed to be a, a natural map? This is like untracked. The game. Yeah. It, it, I don't know, like... Once again, my my, my, my only reference for extreme sports games, SSX Tricky. SSX Tricky? Yeah. Okay, so, Blake... Oh, gosh. Also, yes. I do like how it had physics, too, because I know a lot of games from this time did not actually have physics in their bales. Well, yeah. I guess, when did Tony Hawk's Project 8 come out? That had physics. Was that 2007? Oh, uh, boy. Uh, I think No, that was 06. 2006, I think. Okay, never mind, then. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still nice to see. It is. I just, I don't know, like, my, my main frame of reference for these kind of games is those old, you know, PS2 ones, like the Sean Palmer Yeah. One. So, it's kind of interesting to see, like, a sort of mid, I guess, mid-2000s? Yeah. It's just nice to see someone making a skiing game and doing it right, you know, looking at you mad tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, skiing is the least respected. The only time it shows up in games is as part of, like, a winter game. Yeah, package. or, like, if it's, like... Yeah, I mean, like, the game... This game's not perfect by any means, but it's a lot... A lot better than... than yeah. Like, other... Yeah, like, uh, basically what you said. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? The aesthetic for this, I feel like, is aged well, because it may not seem that different from Freak Style, but the, the, the difference that a few years can make yeah. is everything. Because, like, Freak Style is, like, that new metal industrial aesthetic that got old so quick mm. whereas this has like that uh you know it's got the whole sketchbook you know punk art vibe yeah. and the menus and stuff i will and say it's, it's kind of it's kind of luck though right like how would they have how could they have known that the, the oh yeah the, i, 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 I was saying really. this like yeah a like, compliment to say i'm just saying that they got lucky and they got lucky that, that they picked good. an art style that that kind of holds up yeah, Though, like I will say, they, they kind of... It's a little weird to me that they didn't, like, really double down on it. And I'm not necessarily against the fact that they didn't double down on it. Because it's like, all the UI is a certain way, and then the actual gameplay and the, the visuals in the game... It's pretty standard. It's very standard. It just looks yeah. like real life, basically. 
you know. I was almost gonna say. Looks good and though. Now, I mean, now I'm wondering. Now I'm worrying yeah, about it. it. I was almost gonna say that I feel like its blandness almost works in its favor because it doesn't feel like it dates it. Yeah. Very well. Like I, you know, I wouldn't have guessed this came out in 2007. I wouldn't have really known it looks rather. Yeah, I mean, generic. that's more than 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whereas Freak Style, you can look at it until the week it came out. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, yeah. literally, because of Dry Cell, that was right before Dry Cell, all the shit happened and they didn't get to release their album, so... Yeah. yeah. You could trace yeah. that immediately if you were following New Metal at the time. Yeah. I kind of want to, because, yeah, I've gotten comments where it's like, hey, what what's going, what are you doing next after that boring game you're playing right now? <laughs> or something like, like, like some more direct insults on Freak Out Extreme Free Ride than I'm used to uh, the games that I'm playing getting. And I, I want to say, well, it's pretty basic. And yeah, it, it gets pretty repetitive. You, you know, you do kind of do the same thing over and over. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still not really calling it bad. Um, yeah, as I was gonna say, yeah. I'm watching it and I want to play it. That's I do, fun. I do yeah. want to say, I feel like the name Freak Out is sort of unfortunate because this does not yeah. strike me as a game that would be called like Freak Out. That's also true. Yeah, that's right. it's not a great title. It implies something a lot more. Or, or like, I don't know if arcade is the right word, but, but yeah, much more like freak style, much more extreme than it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Or Freestyle Metal X or something like that. Especially if you only have a PC and, you know, you're looking for extreme sports games. You know, uh, like THQ Nordic has, is, you know, is keeping up the MX vs. ATV collection. But otherwise, aside from some new games in the play, like the snowboard gamer Descenders, this was this was and is kind of one of your few options. Yeah. Uh, what was the you, was it yeah. snow? If you can't was that the other go back one? And get, oh yeah, snow. Yeah, I mean it. it and yeah, steep, I mean, extreme of course. sports. Yeah. Extreme sports is one of the most console game of, of, of genres. And yeah, as somebody who's a big PC player, that's always really bummed me out because I I mean like you can't get skate on PC. Well, you can't get skate on PC, but actually I, I do want to give a shout out to. Uh, at time of recording, last time, like, uh, on Wednesday, uh, Connor had a stream where we played Descenders, um, and Descenders is on PC, and it's really good. Um, yeah. It's, like, procedurally generated downhill racing with some tri- with so- a little bit of tricking, and, and, uh, it, 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 it was a lot of fun. We were playing multiplayer, um, with, uh, with some cool people. Tyler Lasagna was there, and, and I think Zinn was there for a little bit. He was in voice, but he couldn't get oh, the he game. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we, we played with some people in stream chat, and, you know, if you're interested in uh, BMX uh, BMX games and you want to play on, like, a, a like a, play a modern game that does it pretty decently well, it, I mean, Descenders, made by the same guys who made Action Hank, which kind of initially made me go, like, eh, maybe it's going to be kind of a meme game, but no, it's really solidly built. They, they clearly mm-hmm. understand what they're doing. Yeah. And like, uh, I don't know, uh, to sort of finish what I was um, saying earlier, the most console genre, of course, is sports games. Mm, because, yeah. you know, yeah. you know yeah. I ask anyone, and I'm not big into sports myself, but I know people who like who love the Madden games and are PC gamers, and they have a choice to make. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They buy yeah. consoles just to play Madden, and it's like, you know. At least you could play. At least there were a few extreme sports games for PC. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because uh, just looking at this, it reminded me that like the year two thousand seven, like the extreme sports things was kind of dying off by that point. So it's kind of crazy this game came out at all around the time it did. I mean, wasn't it originally going to come out for a console and then came out for like handheld? Uh, it came out in the PAL region only, which is why you don't know right. it. Right. Right. Uh, and it came out for PlayStation two, and PlayStation Portable and PC. Oh, okay. So this wasn't a. This okay, wasn't so I got all American of game. all of what I just said wrong. But <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that, I knew there was some weirdness about the way. It was yeah, released. yeah. But I mean, from you know, from someone who's played that so many weird, of these yeah, games, yeah, that was super weird. <laughs> but that expression of you don't know what you have until it's gone, or like the taking things for granted, uh, really kind of starts to come in when you look at these old games where you could just jump, do some sick, insane thing, land and then just immediately go off another jump and do that again. I mean, like, extreme sports nowadays are are about, like, trying to make the controls as realistic as possible. Or you look at Steep with its G-Force meter, where oh, you do one steep. crazy thing, and then you have to, like, whew, whew, catch your breath, 
or something. Dude, I hate. I really hate steep. And I don't know. It's steep. like, it's like, why can't I just do a cool thing and then do another cool thing right afterwards without yeah. having to have mastery of the systems? Yeah, a lot of them go for a lot of simulation style stuff now. I've noticed. Which I kind of get the. I get the reason why. At least I get. I think I get the reason why. Because like simulation games are more popular than extreme sports games. These days yeah which yeah. is which is kind of sad for the extreme sports game genre but like that doesn't mean you have to crib off of his simulation games or like the appeal of simulation games in order to sell an extreme sports game yeah the, well the it main kind of ruins the, the extreme sports game part of it really? well it's sort of it's sort of part of a broader problem um, which i'm gonna call over seriousification which is a really awkward name but <laughs> work with me here uh, where games are trying way too hard to be difficult and serious and require you to have too much of a time investment. Like, the pick-and-play game, the it's, it's such a gap these days, because you look at something like Cuphead, which blew up, but it was insanely hard. And yeah. if, that game, if that game came out ten years ago, it wouldn't have been that hard. Would you, would you say that uh, Steep is the Dark Souls of Extreme no. Souls? <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I mean, like... Even <laughs> even Descenders, which we just talked about, we had a lot of fun playing. Uh, if you get too big of an air, uh, you're basically going to crash. Would you no say matter Descenders what. is the Dark Souls? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> no, god, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I mean, we already called Amped 2 the Dark Souls of Extreme Sports. Oh, that's yeah. true, so I forgot about play. that. But yeah, like Descenders, you get some insane air. And especially with the procedurally generated levels, sometimes they basically force you into a giant jump yeah. that you'll need to land perfectly or else you will crash just because you've gotten too much speed or whatever. Yeah, you're, you're having too much fun. Remember in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 when they introduced that and then they never brought it back ever again? <laughs> because yeah. it's not no, a I good mean, mechanic. It's, it's not just that. It's like it's also that like since they're procedurally generated levels, you would think you would think that they would give um, you know, they would give you some leeway when it when it comes to like landing because I mean, it is it's it's uh they can't they can't guarantee that you're going to be able to land every jump. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You, you, there's no because it's randomly generated. So they they try their best to make the rules kind of consistent and make sense and and that's fine. But like, you know, it's just weird that like the big the huge jumps that. You know, you would easily be able to land in downhill domination if you lined up, regardless of whether you line it up or not. Some of those you just crash, and I, I can't. I mean, that's I, why procedural generation is a lazy um, thing in your toolbox. I, like, I mean, I, I like work, procedural I, generation a lot. I'm going to be honest. It, do, it I, I really don't, except in certain contexts. It works okay for like, uh, I think like rogue legs and stuff like that, where. I, I don't mind a random or procedural generation, but for something like an extreme sports game, there's such a, a value and richness in being able to learn a line and strategize how your approach is, and that removes a huge chunk of it. Then it's just a physics engine, and I don't like that. Personally. Well, no, see, what I problems. like what I like about uh, procedural generated procedural generation in games is specifically what you were talking about earlier, the pickup and play quality of it, because like sometimes they try to com combine procedural generation with like other stuff and like you know it works to greater or lesser extents but in a game like Descenders there's not even an an, an, an announcer um, there's nobody talking to you you're just listening to the music and you jump right in there's not even a menu you just go right into the gameplay and yeah. it's like that's great that's fantastic Ooh. because Dead. I sometimes I would just want to be able to pick up a game and uh, and just uh, you know jump in and play for a little bit and then quit and like I don't have to worry about the the, the pressure of that and procedural generation can assist with that because you know sometimes like you know if I'm playing XCOM or something I like XCOM but it you know it takes a lot of strategy and it takes a lot of like thinking about lines and stuff and I don't have the time for that that's Whoa. that's the appeal for me yeah but uh, I don't think procedural generation has even the slightest bit to do with how pick up and play a game is. I mean, like, if you add a procedural generation to XCOM, just the nature of the type of game it is, the genre it's in, it would never be pick up and play. It's designed to be complicated. But no, no, like, no I, my, my, my point is, this is why I like procedural generation. Like, it's well, yeah, it but, makes it easier to have lots of new experiences 
um, that are all very similar. <laughs> I'm to get that and, dog there. Yeah, <laughs> had a little bit of trouble yeah. with that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, sort, I sort of see where you're coming from, but I, I think that a pick up and play experience relies ninety five percent in how approachable you make the mechanics and sure, like, sure. whether whether or not the level is designed or generated sure. is, you know. Yeah. So like, I don't want I don't like want to distract like, us, but. For more super serious game yeah. design conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to distract this, but... So this came out in 2007, right? So I was like, what's the last extreme sports game that came out on the PC? The last then? true Like, what, what would be the last one that came out on PC? Like, because if this is 2007, that's already pretty late, you know? There weren't that many. I don't remember any of the Tony Hawks after a certain Tony point. Tony Hawks Pro Skater 5? Uh... Yeah. So I looked up Sean White snowboarding, and guess what this claim came out on? The one from 2008 came out on... PS3, PS2, PlayStation Portable, Nintendo DS, Wii, PC, Xbox 360, Mac OS, and iOS. Holy shit! Yeah, and instead of 47, it's going to be playing all I've of had to buy so many copies across so many uh, consoles yeah. for that one. Yeah! But I did not buy the PC one, because apparently, like, it's a really half-assed port that crashes or whatever. Yeah, and I didn't know this game got so many bad reviews! I loved this game as a little kid. I mean, you're allowed to like what you like, who cares? But I mean, like, Xbox 360 version was nominated for Worst Game Everyone Played by GameSpot. <laughs> Holy Jesus. shit. Like, that that duo of Sean White, Snowboarding, and Stoked, like, just seems to have come out and faded away from people's memories. Like, yeah. you do not see a lot of gameplay. You know, you don't, you don't see a lot of videos or info. For those. I, I, I want to say it's really funny you say that because on well, Wikipedia it has at the bottom it says there is a sequel, Sean White's uh, s snowboarding world stage released in 2009. I went to the Wikipedia page, it has three sentences. And includes yeah. a development section which is empty, which was made note of in July 2017. It's been empty for two fucking years. Yeah, and the stoked <laughs> Wikipedia page there. is pretty uh, empty as well. So, Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely interested in getting to those because, yeah, those two, it seems like they came out and no one really cares. I've always been intrigued by that, and both in video games but also in movies and music. The, I, I, I still need to come up with a name for them. I decided I don't want an awkward one like over seriousification. Uh, where it's something that you go to the Wikipedia page and it says, like, you know, whatever the movie is called is a movie released in 1995 and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Or a game where you go there and it's like, this is a, a snowboarding game released in 2004, and that's it. <laughs> and, I don't know, like, to me it's kind of, video games are kind of a little more, especially the ones on the consoles, always have been kind of a little more sad. Because, like, movies, like, if it's some forgotten movie and just some random guy uploads it on YouTube, like, everyone can watch it if they ever remember its name. But if yeah. it's, like, some video game that everyone forgot about, like, you can't, like, put that up to download. Well, know? yeah, I mean, you, you remember... Um, I collect the, the PC adventure games. Yeah, they're really and, hard to find. A lot of them. And 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 there's some of them I have where there's barely even any reference to them online. There's no YouTube footage, yeah. and you know, it's crazy how you know. And yeah. some of them were popular back in the day, but they just didn't have any longevity. So yeah. All right. So that was Bunker Hill and the Bunker Hill Cup. And next time we're heading to the final freakout. Oh uh, shit! Angel Falls. And then the King of the Hill and the battle. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. be ending Freak Out next time. So see you then.